And now, coming to the stage, your host for this evening, a very funny man. He has performed all over. He's an experienced stand-up comedian and improv artist. You've seen him at the improv. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Bob Doe! Oh, good evening, everyone. How is everybody doing tonight? No, feeling good? Feeling good? I know we always say that when we come up here. You feeling good? You ready for some laughter, right? Oh, yeah. Imagine if they said that like when you were at a restaurant or something. You ready for a steak? You ready for some steak right now? Yeah, or on an airline. Are you ready for a transcontinental flight where you don't sleep the entire time? I'm ready for that. Hey, before we get started, I want to send a shout out to Ron Ruman and Tom Reel. Five years in the making this show. Five years. Let's give them a round of applause. the highest mic stand I have ever seen in my life. It must have been Tom Real. Yeah, they've been doing this for five years. This is actually the, uh, the first show of the sixth season. So they deserve a big round of applause for that. And they've been packing the houses the entire time. So I'm, I'm pretty honored to be doing this show. Uh, as Tom said, I've been doing some stand-up and doing a lot of improv. So I'm very honored to be here tonight and doing this show. Also had another milestone myself. I just hit 50. Yes, indeed. Thank you, please. <clears throat> 50 years old. A lot of things change when you hit 50. Yes, indeed. Talk about a few of those right now. But uh, 50 years old is a big one. And um, I'm a little sick of hearing about the hill. What's this, what's this about the hill? Not Daryl Hill, no. But I'm a little sick about hearing the, about the hill. Cresting the hill. You've, you've, you've gone over the hill. It's all downhill from now. What's with, what, and, you know, at 50, the brakes are a little worn. <laughs> the tires are a little bald. I'm not up for a hill, okay? I'm really not. <laughs> One of the other things I'm wondering about is, what's with the mystery hairs that you get when you're 50? You know what I'm talking about? You know those hairs that just pop up somewhere in the middle of your body? Men know what I'm talking about. Oh, women know too. Excellent, I like that, all right. So I had one just the other day and it was very alarming. I was, I was just drying off and, you know, after a shower and I looked over and I, I saw this, this one little gray hair popping up over my shoulder. And I thought, that's rather odd. I'm going to put this over here. That's rather odd. What's that? I mean, I didn't see it there the day before. So in 24 hours, I grew an entire new hair. <laughs> and if, if, if memory serves me correctly, nature put hairs on our body to keep us warm, right? right. What's, what's that hair doing? It's not keeping my shoulder warm. It's not doing a damn thing for me. Nor is the one that was sticking out of my ear. But uh, yes, very alarming, very alarming. I was talking to a friend of mine the other day, and he said, when you turn 50 you never buy another cup of coffee. Do you know why? Because you just rent it for about, for about 15 minutes at a time. It's like a short-term lease of a cup of coffee. So apparently you start thinking about all sorts of things. You start thinking about your love life, your job, your bladder, apparently. So all sorts of things happen when you're 50. So speaking of hairs, I went to, the, I went to my, uh, my barber the other day. I guess I should say my stylist, right? Because stylists just kind of push the hair around and make it look like you got more furniture up there than you really do. So my stylist, or my manscape architect, as I like to call them, <laughs> manscape architect, went in to see her. She did a great job. She cut my hair, and I'm laying back, and I've got a hot towel on my face, and I got a beer off to the side. I'm feeling good, right? Then all of a sudden, I sense her presence above me, and, and, and she says, oh, my God, oh, my God, and she runs off, and I take the towel off my face, and I said, What's going on? What's, what's, what's with the, oh my God? And she comes flying back with these two popsicle sticks in her hand. And I said, I said, what's going on? She goes, I forgot something. I said, what'd you forget? Your toasted almond bar? <laughs> Apparently, you just got two popsicle sticks. What's the deal with that? She goes, well, we gotta do something about the nose hairs. <laughs> and I said, well, you're probably not gonna get very far clipping them with those two uh, tongue depressors. Oh, oh, we're not gonna clip them. We're gonna remove them. <laughs> And before I could argue, she reaches over my shoulder and dunks these two popsicle sticks into a molten hot vat of wax. Reaches up, sticks one up each nostril, and walks back. And I said, oh, 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 my, oh my God, I'm beginning to put two and two together, right? She's gonna yank every hair out of my head. So I start to panic, and, and I said, uh, Karen, um, actually I said, Karen, I, 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 I don't think this is a good idea. So she comes flying back and she says, look, she says the five words that no grown man wants to hear from a beautiful woman. Are you being a pussy? <laughs> I said, no. I said, no, Karen, I'm not being a pussy. It's just that my mother told me long ago that if you rip out a nose hair, you'll get an infection and you'll die. 
you're not going to get an affection. I said, if you rank, yank out every hair, I'm just going to self-destruct right here in this chair. So anyway, she comes back over and she says, brace yourself. She puts one hair on my nose, one hair on the stick, and yanks down and takes out all the hairs out of my nostril. Holy Jiminy Crickets. My eyes start to tear. I mean, I am, I am just ready to burst out into tears. And she's looking at me like I'm the biggest wuss in the world, right? Now, did I mention they serve beer here? Yeah, it kind of softened the blow a little bit. And by the way, if you're going to use the words, brace yourself, shouldn't it be like if you're carving a bullet out of somebody's chest or, or, or maybe just resetting their dislocated shoulder? Isn't that when you should use that? Not for a simple grooming incident, right? So anyway, I let her yank out the other one about an hour and a half later. Six, <laughs> after about a six pack, she finally took the other one. And it felt great, but I really do not recommend it. Taking the shoulder hair off, piece of cake. Nose hair, forget it, just leave it there. So you hit 50, lots of things change. How many baby boomers do we have in the audience, by the way? Baby boomers. Come on, you can yell louder than that. 1946 to 1964, that makes you a boomer. I am the last of the boomers. Right here, you're looking at him, a 50-year-old guy, last of the baby boomers. When I was a kid, when you guys were kids, what did, what did you want to be when you grew up? What did you want to be when you grew up, sir? A fireman. A fireman, exactly. What did you want to be when you grew up? An architect. An architect, okay. Anyone else? Astronaut. Astronaut, superhero, all these... An adult. An adult, great. How did, how, did that work, how did that work out? Didn't work out very well? Yeah. So am I, sir, so am I. So these were all great, noble occupations, right? And most of all, they were easy to describe. You know, you're, you're a doctor. You go and you, sick, you cure sick people, you wear a smock. You're a superhero, you save the world, and you wear a cape, right? These, all these technology jobs today, I don't know how to explain them, <laughs> right? What do you do? You say, well, I wear a hoodie, and it's uh, about all I got. <laughs> so how do you explain a software architect to an eight-year-old? Like if your kid asks you what you do for a living. I'm a software architect. Well, what, what does that mean exactly? Now, I wrote this down. I pulled this off the internet today. And here's an actual job description. It says, the, uh, the candidate should be able to work with pattern-oriented software architecture for networked object methodologies. I don't know what those words mean individually. <laughs> but you put them together, holy cow. I saw another one that said, cloud architect. How do you describe cloud architect to an eight-year-old? That's ridiculous, right? Very, very scary. Clouds, yeah, I don't even understand the cloud for this. I mean, it brings rain, doesn't it? It doesn't work in a computer environment. So the other thing I saw was, um, what was the other one? Brand, brand uh, uh, evangelist, that's what it was. Brand evangelist, anyone heard this one? Yeah. Or yeah, a software evangelist, a brand evangelist. Is your product so incredible that you have a religious following? <laughs> well, I guess there's Apple. But they, they pretty much do. And I kid Apple. I mean, I've, I love Apple. I've got an Apple iPhone. I've got an iPad. I really like them. But did you ever go into an Apple store and you see the genius bar? Have you seen this? How arrogant is that, right? When I was in school, every bar was a genius bar. Four kamikazes into it, Einstein, right then and there. Absolutely. Smart as heck. Ask me anything. I know anything. I went to the genius bar. So yeah, and lots of tech talk. Lots of, we had to learn a brand new language. Everyone knows what a selfie is, right? But back in college, what was a selfie? It, it was your backup plan on Friday night. That's right. Anyone here of a soft launch? Yeah, what a soft launch is today, it's, it's basically a well-planned early release of your product. Back in college, it was pretty much the same thing. <laughs> Wasn't as well planned, though. So I'm not even going to get into hands-free. <laughs> Goes down a road we don't want to go down. So, you know, and I also thought of all this technological language and all these great technologies that we have today, how would it have affected all the movies back in the day? E.T. would have Skyped home, right? right? <laughs> Bogey would have said, here's Snapchatting with you, kid. And Forrest Gump would have said... Mom always said life was like Windows 8. <laughs> you never know what you're going to get. But I know we're going to get tonight. We're going to get some great comedy here tonight. So put your hands together. We're going to have some great, great comics about here in just a minute.